Studio 81. Is it possible to mount the motors upside down, and what are the disadvantages to that? I would like to remove the props visible in the O3 and Air unit uh, on my drone. Uh, yeah, you can. That's called a pusher configuration. A pusher configuration means the motors are mounted upside down. You 1,000% can do that. Here are the downsides. Number one, depending on your drone frame, it may be more difficult to land. Many drone frames are designed to land on the bottom of the frame. If the motors are upside down, you're landing on the motors, and that, of course, isn't ideal. But that's a, that's a solvable problem. Um, in terms of flight dynamics, there isn't really a disadvantage. In fact, many people argue that having the arm in the uh, negative pressure side of the prop means is better for getting, it's more efficient than having the arm in the positive pressure side of the prop. And I think there's some validity to that. Uh, so you 100% can do that. Just have to make sure that your motors spin the right direction. So you're going to take the motors, you're going to install them upside down, and then you're going to look at the motors from the top down. So you're looking at the bottom of the motors, and then you're going to look at what direction the motor spins from the top down. And you're going to reverse the motors so they spin the right direction. Essentially, you're going to have to reverse all of the motors because you flipped them upside down. But the prop still needs to spin the same direction it was because the flight controller doesn't care that the motors are upside down. It just cares which, which direction the motor spins and which direction the, the air pushes. Okay? So basically, you're going to flip the motors upside down. You're going to reverse all the motors so they still spin the same direction they did when viewed from the top down. And then you're going to take your props and you're going to lift off your props and you're going to put them back on the motor. And the props will be upside down relative to the motor, but they'll be right side up relative to the frame. And uh, then you'll have a pusher drone. More power to you. Uh, here's a question from Carlos Rubio. Thank you for five euros, Carlos. I want to start doing some frame designing. Where should I start in this sense? I'll tell you what. One of the best resources for learning about frame design is Andy Shen, shendrones.com. Now, Andy has come to focus a lot on cinematic frames, um, but Andy has a blog for all of his frame designs. So, like, if we go to shendrones.com and we pick one of his frames, right... The Flaco, okay, that's like a five-inch frame. Andy starts talking about, and he's got a blog entry for all of his frames, and takes you through his thought process and his design process, okay. And if you're an aspiring frame designer, you can learn so much from this. Like all of his sort of, well, okay, this one wasn't super detailed. Uh, like, a lot of times he'll talk about, you know, things he tried and things that didn't work and what changes he made. Okay? So, there's a lot of value in his blog entries. Um, so, that's where I would start you. Um, Chris Rosser also has, he has some similar resources when he talks about his frames. Um, you know, but... Uh, uh, the other guy, I guess, you know, I would talk to you, is Bob Ruge. Uh Bob Rugi is uh, Kabob, F-P-V, K-A-B-A-B. -A -B. He has YouTube videos. Now, he's not as active as he used to be, but for all of his frames, he releases a lot of videos talking about his thought process and his build process. So, Kabob, F-P-V, K-A-B-A-B, -A -B, he's on YouTube. Um, and you could go back through his archives and look for that. Um, Shen Drones, Andy Shen, and Chris Rosser. What can I do to get more flight time on my Vapor X? Asks Luke. How much flight time are you getting, Luke? Put it in the chat. Because if it's like five minutes, don't do anything. Right? You could get a bigger battery, but you're kind of going to ruin the way the five inch flies. Like there's, there's an upper limit. You, you buy a five inch drone. There's an upper limit on how long it can fly before you're just compromising sort of the essence of what it is. And you should just be getting a different drone, right? If you want to fly for 20 minutes, a 5-inch is just, well, a, a typical 5-inch like the Vapor X is just not the thing to do it. Um, so Luke says 2 minutes, 30 seconds of freestyling. Okay, I think you should be getting a little more than that. Um, 13, uh, 1530 battery, 160C light bar. Are you like freestyling hard? 
Like, if you're going hard, that's about right. Um, make it lighter is the answer. If you want more flight time, make it lighter. If you're only getting 2 minutes, 30 seconds of, like, casual flying, that's weird. What voltage are you flying down to? Like, what does the OSD say for battery voltage when you're like, oh, I got to land? A lot of people land earlier than they really need to. 3.5 per cell? That's about right. You could go a little further. I wonder if your battery's shitty. You said it's 160 C. I mean, that's that's a, that's a ridiculously high C rating. It should be fine. I don't know if your battery's shitty. Yeah, 1536S is a big honking battery. Um... But not, like, ridiculously big. Not out of the question. Uh, it's kind of weird. Gaoling, that's a good brand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is your um, battery voltage calibrated? When you plug in, does it say 4.2? When you put it on the charger, does the charger read the same voltage that your OSD does? What if your battery voltage is miscalculated and you're stopping at 3.5, but it's really 3.7 or something? I don't know. The, the short version is if you want longer flight time, make your, make your drone lighter. I have a 3.6 inch freestyle quad and I want to get another quad to get better and I want to do long range. But for getting better, should I get a 5 inch? Um, if you've only ever flown a 3.6 inch, uh, I don't. You could go to a 7 inch as long as you're not an idiot. The difference between a 3.6 inch and a 5 inch is not that huge. So if you decided you wanted to fly a 7-inch, start slowly. Be respectful of the fact that the props are a lot bigger and it's a lot more dangerous. Learn, fly it carefully at first. Don't just, like, start flying 5 kilometers in one direction and then be like, oh, what do I do? And then if you decide you want to do longer-range stuff, first of all, keep in mind that in the United States, anytime you're flying outside of line of visual line of sight, you're, you're breaking the rules. So don't do that. Um, it's on you. <laughs> I'm not your mom, uh, and I'm not the FAA. So I will tell you, if you do this, you'll be breaking the rules, but I'm not going to tell you, so don't do it. Ah, the FAA can tell you don't do it. And they can fine you if they catch you doing it. So, you know, enough said. But, um, d you know, if you decide to do long range, like work your way up and learn your mistakes in a way that you don't lose your drone or drop your drone on somebody's head. So... But yeah, you could go from a 3.6 inch to a 7 inch if you're an intelligent and careful and reasonable person and you take the risks into account. 